Hello guys and welcome to yet another tutorial. In this video we're gonna talk about the pre-production, which is all the planning before creating the animation. This is some very important work and it is the first process of creating a great animation. And a good pre-production phase will make your life easier and more manageable. So buckle up your seatbelts and let's get started. In this video I will cover art direction and design. This involves creating all the concepts needed to make your scenes, like finding concept art. And I will also talk about storyboarding. Most of you have probably already dealt with a storyboard and it's very difficult sometimes but it really is a lifesaver during production so you should definitely stay tuned for that part last but not least I'm gonna talk about how to make a cinematic sequence this is all from the camera shot size framing angles movement but also how to plan great transitions with that said let's get started this tutorial will be based on my Star Wars short cinematic sequence. I will use this to break down the different parts of the pre-production process. So let's go back to the beginning. And of course it all begins on Pinterest. This is where I usually find all my inspiration and this is also where I found the inspiration for my Star Wars sequence. What I usually do is gather a lot of different concepts. I then create a concept board or a mood board where I gather all my ideas for the environment, the spaceships, the buildings, everything that is in my project really. I use Mural which is a free mood board app. It's really brilliant and it's a great place to gather and share your ideas. I'm in no way sponsored by Mural but it's just a tool that I use, link will be in the description. It is really important to create concept art. This is because it helps you to convey the look, the feel and the mood of your idea. And it's simply always a good idea to get your idea down on paper, or in this case in the computer. I have had plenty ideas and projects over the years where I have forgotten small details because I didn't write it down or I didn't create an art piece that reminded me of the idea. That's why concept art is very important. And of course concept art is absolutely necessary when you're working on a huge production because you need to convey the idea to the whole team that is working on the production. That includes the VFX artists the modelers and so on. When I draw my concept art I usually have my mood board that we created earlier by my side. In that way I can take all the best elements from my mood board and convey them over to my idea. At first I actually created this scene as a snowy scene but later I changed it because I thought it would be too much work. But I only realized this because I created the concept art first and thereby I saved a lot of time in production. Most of my concept art is pretty rough and this is because this is not a huge production. This is a very small scene so I didn't want to spend too much time in the pre-production phase. Originally I wasn't gonna show anybody my concept art, this is only for the sake of the tutorial. So usually when you create concept art and if it's just for you, don't spend too much time on it. The only thing that is important is that you understand what you have created. And it's the same thing with the storyboard, but I'll get back to that. I hope this gave you some insight in the pre-production of concept art. Now let's move on to the storyboarding. Because why should you waste your time creating a storyboard? Well, for a lot of reasons. First of all, you get an idea of exactly how many shots there will be in your final video. Furthermore, this is the first time you actually see your finished movie. Of course it's only still images, but you still get a pretty good idea of how the shots will work together. And to show just how helpful a storyboard is, I think we should take a look at my project files. Because I created my storyboard, I knew that the camera was only gonna see the subject from one side. Therefore, even before I began production, I knew that I only had to put details on half of the landscape. Therefore, I both saved time and memory on my computer. And because I had planned the angle as well, some buildings are even floating in the air. Also I knew that the buildings on the ground won't be that visible because the camera won't be close to the ground. Therefore I didn't give them much detail. This is just one of many cases where it's brilliant to plan your shot. Because maybe if I was experimenting with this scene, I would have given the buildings way more detail if I wanted a close up shot. But if I didn't end up using the close up shot anyways, it would have been a waste of my time and memory on my computer. So back to the storyboard. I think you get the point of how important it is. So let's try to break down my storyboard and what choices I made along the way because it's definitely not random. So let's start with the first shot. This type of shot is also called an establishing shot. This is usually the first shot in a scene that provides an overview of the setting. It is usually shot from a distance, which is offering the audience a chance to identify themselves with the location, the color, the time in history, and so on. If you have followed this channel, you know that I love establishing shots. I think they are a whole story to themselves, and they could really stand alone as a single shot. That is why I usually start my animation with an establishing shot. I usually use a wide angle lens and make sure that the camera is not moving too crazy, because I want the viewer to notice a lot of the details. By gathering all the information that we get from our establishing shot, it really sets our expectation for what is going to happen. For example, we know since there are spaceships and sci-fi buildings that this is probably fiction and therefore we also set our expectations after just that and that is very comforting for the viewer. 
So with that said, we are done talking about the establishing shot. Let's move on to the next shot, which is the tracking shot. And we actually have two tracking shots that are very similar. And of course, I'm talking about the TIE Fighter shot and the X-Wing shot. So let's try to break both of the shots down. A tracking shot is any shot in which the camera physically moves sideways, forward or backwards through the scene. The tracking shot usually lasts longer than other shots and follow one or more moving subjects. A tracking shot is very good to immerse the audience into a particular setting. It really allows the audience to experience a real-time journey through a setting in the same manner as the on-screen characters, which in this case is the X-Wing or the TIE Fighter. An effective tracking shot makes the viewer feel like they are a part of the action, helping them to stay engaged in the film's narrative. Since I knew my animation would be very short, I thought this was the perfect type of shot for this scene, since I really wanted the audience to be as engaged as possible. Furthermore, I chose that the framing should be a full shot. And what is a full shot? That is usually where the character's entire body reaches from top of the frame to the bottom of the frame. But in our case, this is not a character, this is a spaceship. But what a full shot also offers is that it lets your subject fill the frame while keeping emphasis on the scenery. Since the action is happening so fast, I really thought that it was a good idea to keep the emphasis on the scenery, since that will let the viewer know where we are in the city. Now let's talk about the transitions, cause maybe you noticed the transition or maybe you didn't, but the thing is that I planned it using my storyboard. And once again, this shows how handy a storyboard can be. So let's break down the transition. I knew that I wanted towers in my scene, and why have towers in your scene if you're not gonna use them for anything? So what I did is placing the towers very close to the camera, both in front of the subject and behind the subject. The towers that are in front of the subject will be very close to the camera, so when the camera is passing by, it will generate a lot of motion blur, which will give the feeling of speed. I use this technique in a lot of my projects, just like the flying sci-fi car, where I place trees in front of the camera, which generates the feeling of speed. I also thought I would use the towers to create a transition, since I wanted the chase to be very smooth, and I thought a regular cut would be too distracting. So I used the towers to create a transition. I did this by masking out the tower, which then introduced the next clip. And I think we have to watch it in slow motion to really get the detail. It's a really good idea when you're creating a storyboard to take a look at how your shots are working together. If it's possible for you to plan a transition, then do it, cause it will really save you some time during production. And as I mentioned earlier, your storyboard doesn't have to be perfect. It's all about getting all the information necessary for you to create this shot. For example, this is my storyboard for this scene. And even though it doesn't look great, I still know what is going on. I know that the tower is supposed to be a mask for a transition, and I know that the shot is going forward, and I know that my subjects are moving forward as well. I think there are a lot of good tips and tricks for creating a great storyboard, but I think the best advice is just to ask yourself why. Why use that framing? Why use that shot? Why use that transition? And so on. You always have to ask yourself, does this really help sell my message? Does this shot help tell my story? Or does it just confuse my viewers? You always have to think of the effect of your shot. Well guys, I really hope this video gave you some insight in my pre-production. This video was a bit all over the place, but I still hope you learned something. I could talk about the rest of the shots, but I actually think what I have covered gets most of my points through. So all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching, drop a like if you feel like it, and I'll see you in the next video.